Uh, so yeah, I'm Robin. Uh, I'm here to talk about lightning fast database tests. And um, I'll start a little bit by, by talking about why I think it matters, how it works. Um, I'll show you some example usage of pgtestdb, which is a library I'll talk about shortly. Um, and I'll end with a simple benchmark. So while pgtestdb focuses on Postgres, similar techniques can be used for like SQLite, um, maybe MySQL, I'm not sure about that. Um, but yeah, this will focus on Postgres. Uh, so why I think database tests matters is that, well, why we need to focus on them is because they're usually the slowest ones. And that's because of complicated setups, teardowns, um, things like that. And uh, having a fast test suite usually lowers the barrier to creating new tests. So it makes it easy to create new ones and you feel confident in, in your new tests. It also reduces CI, CD pipeline bottlenecks. And it allows for a faster feedback loop that ultimately uh, accelerates development. So just imagine how, how much time you're watching tests run uh, and how much time we're collectively wasting just uh, looking at those um, yeah, GitHub actions builds or whatever. So how does pgtestdb work and like, what can it do for you? So essentially it creates ephemeral Postgres databases really quickly and it does so using template uh, databases, which is a feature of Postgres. Uh, it allows you to run your tests in parallel and it deletes tests or test databases if they're successful. And if they fail, it will store them for you to inspect them and uh, have a look at them, if you will. And also as an additional feature, it allows you to run each test completely in isolation from each other meaning that you don't have to bother with teardown. Um, and one note on, I usually get the question about like Docker test, test containers, why can I not use them? And the problem with those is that they, they create a new test container for you for each and every single package that you want to test. And if you have a large amount of packages, that leads to uh, quite slow uh, test times. So some quick numbers for you. So a, temp a template with about a thousand migrations applied to it takes about half a second to create. And a new database from that template takes about 10 milliseconds to create. So it's, it's very fast. Uh, and just quickly on how it works. So you call pgtestdb.new and it will check if you already have a migration for those given set of uh, migrations or a template for those migrations, I would say. Um, and if you don't have a template already, it will create one for you. It will create a new database for you. And then you ex execute your test just like you normally would. And if the test pass, it will delete the database. If not, it will leave them around free to inspect. So some example usage. You specify your connection details just like you normally would. In this case, I'm using PGX, but you can use any standard library um, driver, really. Then you specify your template directory, or if you choose to embed them in your binary. Um, and in this example, we're using Golang mag migrate, but you can use um, a variety of different migration suites or libraries. Uh, and then you call pgtestdb.new to get your database, and you can query it, run your assertions, just like you normally would. So a quick benchmark that is, is very artificial, so keep that in mind. It won't represent your actual usage in your real-world applications. Um, but I created a benchmark to insert and list a thousand rows. And because I'm using lists, like the, the, the databases would leak into each other. So I couldn't use lists. Like if you insert one product, one row, and then list them um, and assert on the count, I would get more than one every single time if I didn't use pgtestdb or other approach. So the benchmark runs in five different configurations, sequentially not using pgtestdb, so it inserts one row at a time, lists them. Um, and then I'm using pgtestdb for the other four configurations, along with some other optimizations. Um, and the best case test scenario is five times faster using 
pdtestdb mounted in, a temp in TMPFS and with fsync turned off. So you can see in blue we have the sequential insertions and lists, which is not using pdtestdb and you spin up a new container or a new database for, um, you, sorry, you reuse the, the same database for each and every single test. Whereas in, in the yellow one to, the, to your right, you have pdtestdb, which creates a new ephemeral database for every single test uh, with TMPFS and fsync turned off. And it's about five times faster, which I think is massive. So just a quick recap. Um, it allows you to run your tests safely in parallel. You don't have to bother with teardown, anything like that. Databases won't leak into each other. Uh, it's really fast. Um, and all your database tests run in complete isolation, like I mentioned. Um, so with that in mind, thanks for watching. And a big shout out to Peter Downs for creating this amazing library. I love you, uh, working with it. And here's a QR code with a link to the presentation to the PDTestDB and all the material used in this presentation. So thank you for watching.